This is the city, Los Angeles, California, as the Jaguars and Rams get set to kick things off in Inglewood. And we cannot kick it off without introducing the third member of our crew, Laura Oakman. Hi, Laura. Hi, Kevin. Andrew Whitworth said, I've seen plenty of teams acquire guys mid-season, and people think they're going to make an immediate, massive impact. But it takes time. He said, this time last year, Tampa Bay lost to us, then they lost to Kansas City. Everyone wrote them off, and they didn't lose again. We are frustrated, but we still think we're going to be special. We're going to bust this thing through, and once we do, watch out. Will it be today? Said Raheem Morris. It's Jacksonville's fault. They've got to play him. Kevin? Now let's see if they can back up the excitement and the words as Sean McVay's fifth season continues. 7-4 and four record coming into today. Urban Meyer in his first year at the helm of the Jaguars, and he wants to fire everybody up on that Jaguars sideline. We're ready to go. Jags won the toss. They elect to defer, so Los Angeles will start with the football first. That means Matthew Stafford will be out on the field first. And we'll get a chance to look at this Rams offense, which has struggled over the last month, put points on the board and staying on the field. We'll get into that as the game gets underway. Back deep is Brandon Powell, just elevated from the practice squad. He'll take it from the one yard line. Powell, the Florida Gator with a big opening and Powell with good speed. A little zigzag to midfield. Powell, welcome to the lineup. Brandon Powell, Chris Claybrooks with the tackle, but Powell brings it 65 yards to start the game. Watch him turn on the gas right here. Once he feels this seam, boom, puts his foot in the ground and takes off. He almost took that thing to the house. Rayshon Jenkins had a good angle on him just to corral him down. But hey, what a start. We said fast start for the offense. That's sure nice to end up in the other team's territory. Sony Michelle starts at running back. Daryl Henderson's been banged up for this Rams offense, so Michelle gets the carries at least to start. And on first out, Michelle up the middle and tripped up inside the 30 to the 27 yard line for Matthew Stafford a chance to get things going again in the month of December because November not kind of the team or to the quarterback oh no doubt and, you know he's been working with some new guys obviously working in Odell Beckham Van Jefferson having to move a little bit we got an injured Ram on the field that's center Brian Allen who has started every game this season for Los Angeles and that would be a significant loss for this Rams offense right out of the gate. It's an offensive line that has been consistent. All five guys starting all 11 games this year. Now 12 for the Rams. Henderson, Michelle, we'll see them both in the backfield today. They're going to tend to Brian Allen right now, and we'll step aside early in Los Angeles. Mark, looks like an ankle for Brian Allen. It sure does, and you see it right there, twisting and turning a little bit. But that'll be a huge loss for this offensive line. We just brought in number 70, Joe Noteboom. Heavy personnel package, six offensive linemen to run behind on second and three, and down to the 21-yard line. So Brian Allen started every game this year at center, Mark. That's a big change when you bring in that second center. It's a huge change, and Coleman Shelton, number 65, is going to have a lot of catching up to do because it's a communication thing between the quarterback the center the center and the rest of the offensive line that communication has to be sharp it has to be on point especially for an offensive line that hasn't run the ball well these last three games that they've lost this is this could be a big blow for them heavy personnel grouping again six offensive linemen plus two tight ends Sony Michelle tried to run with that and Miles Jack into the backfield for the stop. No gain on the play. This Jaguars defense has been the strength of this 2-9 and nine team up front. Malcolm Brown's done a very nice job along that defensive line. And then look at these linebackers. Josh Allen, Miles Jack, two guys that really stand out back there. And those are those backers that can really fly sideline to sideline. That new age NFL linebacker that can really run. They can run with tight ends. That can cover halfbacks. They got a couple of them and just some studs on the defense that fly around. And remember, Sean McVay told us this week, this is the offense or the defense that throttled the Buffalo Bills. Here's Michelle with the catch and like a heat-seeking missile right on top of him was Rudy Ford. Outstanding play in the open field by Ford. Watch this hit. Matthew Stafford does a great job of checking it down. He knows there's nothing open down the field. 
but Ford was all over him before he even got a chance to get going. Turned a check down into a no gain. It's be a little early momentum if Jacksonville can stop the Rams after that 65-yard kickoff return, the longest return of the year for Los Angeles. Third down and 11. Jaguars rush four. Stafford steps up over the middle and incomplete. He had Ben Skoranek open and he couldn't pull it in at the eight yard line. Oh, just an excellent job climbing in the pocket. And even before this, understanding they're getting pressure off the edge. They communicated it properly with the backup center. And here comes Skoranek across the field. Stafford with an absolute dime across his body. They got to catch those balls for him over the middle. That's, I mean, that's the difference between touchdowns and field goals here. And this offense needs to get hot these last few games of the season. And after that play, the Rams having to help David Edwards, the left guard, off the field. So on the opening drive, Allen out and Edwards goes down on the final play before a field goal try. Not the way they plan to start this game. That is huge. Two losses on that front offensive line is no good. So Matt Gay for a 40-yard field goal try. And the kick by Gay right down the middle to give the Rams the 3-0 advantage. 65-yard return, Nets 3. And Los Angeles with the early lead at home. Jacksonville and Los Angeles getting week 13 underway here on the West Coast and a 3-0 lead for the Los Angeles Rams. After a long kickoff return, Jaguars defense gets a big hold and Los Angeles settles for the 40-yard field goal try. Now, Jadon Mickens back awaiting the kickoff for the Rams. Mickens from the seven-yard line. Looking for a big return of his own. And Mickens across the 30 down near the 32 as Trevor Lawrence makes his way out onto the field. We saw these Jaguars last week, Mark, and the first time we've had the chance to see Trevor Lawrence in person this season. The numbers for the season, nine touchdowns, ten interceptions. But what was your impression of him in person for the first time last week? Well, they're in a one-possession ball game at the very end with a two-minute drill and a chance to win it, or at least go tied at the end. And those are situations that Trevor hasn't been in most of his career because he's had the lead in a lot of these games. So he's learning a ton on the fly, but I've seen everything I need to see to know that he's the man. James Robinson, who has been dinged up this week, was somewhat questionable as to whether he would go. Not only goes, but gets the first carry and picks up two yards. It's an offensive line that's done a pretty good job of protecting Trevor Lawrence, although Jawan Taylor has struggled with holding calls, 10 of them this year for the right tackle. In the backfield, James Robinson, good to have him back there if you're a Jaguars fan. He's such a big part of this offense, although he just met Aaron Donald and coughed up the football, and it's turned over to Jalen Ramsey, the former Jaguar, who gets the loose ball. What an absolute monster. Just throwing other humans around and ripping that ball out as he does it. The awareness, the strength, the quick move to get in the backfield, and then look at him rip this ball out with his left hand. Robinson's holding it with all his might with two hands, and Aaron Donald just pries that thing loose. Great starting field position again for the Rams offense. And that Jaguars defense pushed with their backs against the wall again, thanks to Aaron Donald making an outstanding play. David Edwards out at left guard, Bobby Evans in. Robinson, who fumbled a week ago, it was his first loss fumble of the year, so back-to-back -back weeks with fumbles for Robinson as Stafford sets up the screen to his tight end, Tyler Higby, and Higby tripped up after a gain of eight, but a flag down, and the first time we'll hear from referee Cleet Blakeman today. man downfield offense number 63 the five yard penalty replay second down that's one of the three remaining starters on the offensive line austin corbett 
There's Robinson. Now, last week when Robinson fumbled. Yeah, he got pulled for a little bit. We didn't see him on the field for 18 consecutive plays yep. and came back in the second half. We'll see if that's the case this week after this fumble ripped out of his hands by Aaron Donald. Play fake. Stafford on the roll, wide open. Odell Beckham Jr. down the sideline. First and goal, Rams. I watch Odell Beckham just start on the left side of your screen and start screaming across the field. He's got to go under one backer, over the second backer, and then get in phase with the quarterback, which means get parallel to him. Look at these guys. This is textbook execution on a naked by Matt Stafford. And you know, people have talked about his health, saying he's banged up, and we talked to him. Those two throws, that third down throw on the first drive and that one on the run, he looks fine to me. He told us, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm really fine. And he said, everybody's banged up, man. It's the NFL. I'm no different than anyone else. He's just a tough sucker, and he'd never tell you. First and goal from the five, looking for his favorite target, Cooper Cup, who is going to draw all the attention from the Jaguars and every other team he faces. Cup with 92 catches, over 1,200 yards this year. Try to sneak him out of the backfield on that infamous little wheel route by halfbacks. The Jaguars were all over it. You see him lined up next to Matthew Stafford in the backfield. There he goes on the, on the rail route right there. And Allen and Campbell weren't fooled. Sony Michelle, the running back, on second and goal at the five. Michelle, the carry. Driving towards the goal line, Sony Michelle in for the touchdown. Look at Michelle punching it across the goal line. Ooh, well, he just that hung on. Almost, that almost came out. Tyson Campbell, who had an interception last week, almost got the rip there. And just a real subtle thing on that play, but you saw Matthew Stafford motion the wide receiver in just a little bit tighter. He had to get inside. He knew their numbers weren't great up front without that receiver to go make that block and spring Michelle in for the touchdown. They're taking an extra look at this just to confirm that it broke the plane of the goal line. It has been confirmed. It is a touchdown. And the Rams turn the turnover into points. Saw that heavy personnel. Coach McVay talked about that on Friday. Saying whatever we got to do to get this running game rolling, we're willing to do it. And that might mean putting some extra pounds on the field. Well, the pounds on Aaron Donald who were certainly there to rip the ball out of James Robinson's hands, and it turned into six for Sony Michelle. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear as we welcome you back to Los Angeles alongside Mark Sanchez with Laura Oakman. I'm Kevin Kugler. 10 0 lead for the Rams, which means this is the 41st consecutive game that the Jacksonville Jaguars have trailed their opponent at some point during the game. Seventh longest streak by any team since 1930. And the Jags will take it out to the 25 yard line. For the Los Angeles Rams, this is a much better start because look at November. They trade for Vaughn Miller, they sign Odell Beckham Jr., they lose Robert Woods almost immediately and they go 0 3. But the remaining schedule Arizona, Seattle, Minnesota, Baltimore, San Francisco. Not an easy road. For Sean McVay, but as he said, we've got six left for sure. That's a lot of football, and the story isn't written yet. We've got the pen. Well, so far, the pen with plenty of ink in it, a 10 0 lead to start this ball game. 10 25 to go in the first as the Jaguars' offense gets back out on the field, and Carlos Hyde in at running back, replacing Robinson. Lawrence with the toss and a juggling attempt by Laquan Treadwell falls incomplete. Laura Oakman, you've got an update on the Rams offensive line? Yeah, because we have a lot going on. As for center Brian Allen, he threw his helmet on that bench, limped it into the tent, then into the locker room while yelling more out of frustration than pain. That's usually a sign, but he is back out here testing that knee right now. He is questionable, as is guard David Edwards, who is back out after being in the locker room this whole time, questionable with that foot injury. Oh. 
two of your five starting offensive linemen going down right out of the gate. In the backfield, it's LaVisca Chenault who gets the carry. And Chenault to the 28-yard line. Leonard Floyd on the stop. Trying to turn him into Cordero Patterson. Take a page out of Atlanta's book. But this is exactly what they want. Third and long situations for this defense. Gives them opportunities to get sacks, right? We talked to Von Miller on Friday after practice, and he said, hey, when there's sacks to be had, we'll, we'll make them. We'll go get them. We'll go get the quarterback. But when we're playing catch up and teams are running the ball against us, it makes it tough. This is a sack situation, third and seven. Chenault in the backfield, four-man rush. Trevor Lawrence will dump it to Chenault, and Chenault leaning across the 30, short of the first down. Taylor Rapp there to make the stop, and the Rams defense pitches the three and out. Looked like Trevor got to that check down just a little quick for me. I, I would have liked to see him work that tight end maybe a little longer. Give him another opportunity, just another half beat, but, you know, it's easy to say from the booth. <laughs> He's got those guys <laughs> breathing down on him. Never a fun feeling. Brandon Powell, excellent punt. It'll bounce at the 10, and that one's going to die right inside the two-yard line down at the 1. Daniel Thomas gets down there. Excellent punt by Logan Cook. We'll be right back after this message from Lowe's. There's a new team in the NFL. One that plays for home, everyone's home. Whether you're a rookie or a seasoned pro, this team has your back. We can help you tackle any project. We're the Lowe's home team, and anyone can be on it. Are you in? Try out for the Lowe's home team today. Bright spot for the Jaguars so far, the punt of Logan Cook. Third in the NFL this season in net punting average. This isn't going to hurt him at all as this one's down at the one-yard line. Outstanding play at the other end by Daniel Thomas, who just walks that tightrope to stay out of the end zone. Fancy footwork. So the Rams, who have started both of their previous two drives in Jacksonville territory, start now at the one. And a gaping hole for Sony Michelle. That'll dig you out of a hole quickly. Nine yards on first down before Andrew Winger can make the tackle. And those are the kind of positive first down plays, especially backed up like this, that you need just to give yourself a little breathing room. But watch the right side of this offensive line just collapse it down and give Michelle a free run to the second and third level there of the defense. Now they got a little breathing room. Now they can operate, but you can tell this is a downhill running attack, and look at all those old linemen, baby. <laughs> Six offensive linemen plus a couple of tight ends. Stafford the give to Michelle again, and Sony Michelle just trying to push the pile, and he should have the first down out across the 11 yard line. Nevin Lawson and Jay Tufele. Tufele brought up off IR this week after he broke his hand in warm ups against Miami and London. He's in there on the stop. We were told we were in practice on Friday. Sean McVay said we're going to see a lot of heavier personnel this week. Oh, and look at all these big guys up front. He said whatever it takes to get this running game going. I understand that, but usually you only dress like seven or eight linemen for a game with two guys going down. I mean, they're, they're another injury away from a tight end or a defensive lineman having to step in. Down and 10 at the 12-yard line. Michelle the carry again. To pick his way through traffic. Not much there that time. Closed in by the Jaguars. Damian Wilson and Rayshon Jenkins, a two-yard pickup. Second and eight at the 14-yard line. There it is. Sony Michelle to the outside. Good block ahead. And Michelle twisting forward for the first down to the 23-yard line. And 
and this is exactly how they wanted to start this game. They wanted to dominate this thing from the inside out and from the front. In the trenches, they wanted to establish this run game. Look at Cooper Cup, man. That's one of the best wideouts in the league, just throwing DBs around. That's, that's not easy to get those wideouts to go in and block like that. What a stud. Sony Michelle's been carrying the load so far. Eight Marshall, carries, Marshall. 40 yards for this Rams offense. First down. Stafford all day to throw. Checks it down to Michelle. And Sony Michelle stepping through one tackle and fights his way to the 26 yard line. Rayshon Jenkins on the stop. And Laura Oakman, Odell Beckham Jr. just starting to get comfortable with this Rams team. Yes, and that might be figuratively, not necessarily literally. I talked to him pregame. He had to cut his warm-up short because that back injury he suffered in the second quarter versus Green Bay. He told me it's not worse, but he said it just isn't getting any better. He said he's in a lot of pain, but he's been going in and out. We saw that last great grab in that last series. It doesn't look like it hurts him, but said that back is really bothering him. That's a hard thing to play through especially in a position where you're almost guaranteed to get hit. Stafford off the play fake. Just has to dump this one at the feet of Tyler Higby with Chase on living up to his name and chasing Matthew Stafford. So a third and six. One of the things that the Rams have struggled with, Mark, during this three-game losing streak is the inability to stay on the field. They've averaged just over 24 minutes time of possession. And sometimes time of possession with this Rams offense isn't a right. stat that matters a whole lot, but it's one that Sean McVay was very aware of when we were over at practice up front. Oh, absolutely. And such an emphasis on third downs like this. Wars brings some pressure. Stafford floating it high for Beckham, and he couldn't connect. He had an opening and just a little too tall for the veteran wideout. And Stafford just misses a little bit high. You're going to see Beckham go streaking across the field there. And he's trying to dump it over the backer and under the safety. That's a tough throw. Odell almost went up and got that thing. Just a little too tall. One time for the Rams, Jadon Mickens waving for the fair catch. He'll make it at the 27-yard line and a timeout in Los Angeles. 10-0 Rams. It's not you, right? I didn't. No, no, no. Oh, okay. this time. Okay, this, this time. <laughs> Thought maybe I spoiled the surprise for people. <laughs> From the 27 on first down, Lawrence on the roll, nowhere to go, and he'll just duck out of bounds before Leonard Floyd can hit him. You have been in this young man's shoes as a first-round pick playing in the National Football League. You had the benefit of some strong talent around you to help you in your rookie year that maybe Trevor Lawrence is still looking to add to this roster, but what's going through his mind each and every week? Well, it's interesting because he, there aren't the veterans in this group that have made deep playoff runs, guys with experience that know what it looks like to have success at this level. So he's kind of trying to figure it out on his own. And it's up to this organization and these coaches to put the right pieces around him. As he almost threw a pick to Vaughn Miller. Like Vaughn looking to make an impact as a Ram. He almost got it here. Here he is. He's going to pop out, show the rush, and then bluff it. Trevor just lost sight of him. <laughs> those are those throws. As soon as it leaves your hand, you wish you had that thing back. <laughs> Third and nine at the 28. Four-man rush. Lawrence with Treadwell open. The defender fell down, and Treadwell taking advantage. Into Rams territory. Upended at the 44 by Jordan Fulham. Watch Dante Dayon right here. He was looking for a flag because he just got bulldozed by Treadwell. He stood up while the play was still going, had his hands out. You see him just get run over. <laughs> He's looking around like, hey, what are we doing here? And a nice little stiff arm by Treadwell. 
First third down conversion for either team. And it sets the Jaguars up at the 44 of the Rams. LaVisca Chenault in the backfield again, and Chenault buried. Immediate penetration. Ernest Jones, the rookie from South Carolina, was right there. And again, we have not seen James Robinson since yes. the fumble on the opening possession for Jacksonville. Just like last week, <laughs> Urban Meyer gets upset with those guys when they turn it over like that. And he, deferred, he deferred to his offensive coordinator position coaches when asked after the game last week about it. He said, well, it's, it's a, that's a Bernie Parmalee, the running back's coach. But safe to say we have not seen James Robinson in this game since. Lawrence will check it down to Carlos Hyde, trying to get to the edge, and there's just nothing there. Jones and Miller closing off the outside, third and long for the Jaguars. Look at Ernest Jones, number 50. He diagnoses it, and you see him right there, just understand that it's a screen quickly, get to his gap, cover his gap, and then retreat and chase down the halfback. Great instincts there to sniff out the screen. Third and 12 at the 46. Rams show some pressure to draw play to Hyde, and Carlos Hyde down at the 36-yard line. Jordan Fuller with the tackle. He ran into his blocker, too. Looked like Cam Robinson had an assist on that one. This thing had a chance here if he doesn't run into his own guy there. Looks like they're going to go for it as well. I think that's the right call, especially in games like this. I mean, give Trevor more reps. The more reps he can get, the better. More offensive snaps, more looks, more experience. Jags are 11 for 20 this year on fourth down. Fourth and two. Lawrence to throw, zips it over the left side, and it's caught by Marvin Jones Jr. for a first down. A little mustard on that throw from Trevor Lawrence for six. And I love that they're moving this pocket, getting Trevor on the run out to his left. And just a quick little sit route. Wow, he just threw a laser. As soon as that receiver cleared, that backer, he put it right off his ear. Here's Hyde on first down. Nothing there, but let's go back to the fourth down conversion once more. I mean, this is these are big time throws running to your left, slamming on the brakes, flipping your hips, and look at Urban in the back. He's fired up. I love, <laughs> it. I love it. And those are the big time throws that you got to step up and make on a fourth down, keep the drive alive, and stay competitive in this ballgame. Chenault out of the backfield on second down. Lawrence stepping away from the rush. Now he's going to try to run, and he's caught by Greg Gaines. Pretty good quickness for the 6'1", 312-pound defensive lineman. And watch Trevor. He gets up in the pocket, remains a passer. I like it. His eyes downfield, and then when he decides to go, he takes off there, almost jumped out of it, but Gaines... Gets him by a shoelace. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter of play. It's been the Rams so far, but the Jaguars on the move. It's plays like this from Trevor Lawrence that have you convinced he's the guy, right, Mark? Oh, just an absolute strike when they needed it on fourth down. That's a gotta have it situation, and you see his head man. Arms up, fired up, keep the drive alive. See if Trevor can get some points on the board. Can he convert on third and eight? Pocket collapsing. Lawrence will tuck it and run to the 25. Trevor Lawrence lunging forward. He's got the first down. That last little lunge moved the chains. And he's so athletic. Much more athletic than people think. Remember, he ran plenty of read option. He ripped off some long runs at Clemson. But this is it. Right there, you can see him. The sticks awareness. That's knowing where that first down marker is. Understanding I got to get up and get down quickly before I get hit. <laughs> there goes the head man cheering him on again. This is number one fan right now. 50. 50. From the 19-yard line, first down. Carlos Hyde, the running back. And it's Hyde who gets the carry. Trying to get to the edge, and Hyde not going to get there. Out of bounds 
at the 20 yard line. First time today we head across town to check in with Carissa Thompson. Thank you, Kevin. 49ers take their three game winning streak to Seattle. How about this? Seattle's offense has been pedestrian as of late, but this is a way to jumpstart it. Travis Homer takes the direct snap 73 yards for the score. Niners just added a touchdown waiting on the extra point right now. Seahawks up by one. Carissa, thank you. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number five for taunting. 15-yard penalty, excuse me, half a distance to the goal line, first down. The former Jaguar, Jalen Ramsey, taunting at the end of the run by Carlos Hyde. Let's watch him at the end here. There he is. And that's, they're flagging you for that. I know that's the emphasis, but one, you can't have those penalties. If those are the rules, listen, you got to play by the rules. I just don't love that one, you know? I just, I mean, these guys get, it's an emotional game. These guys get fired up. He's playing against his former ball club. He's got to keep the cool head. Carlos Hyde, nice little cutback to get some yardage up the middle and down inside the five, where to be second down. One more look at the taunt called against Jalen Ramsey. Just a little extra. A little pace now for the Jaguars. Lawrence peeling away and throwing it away. He peeled to his left. And he looked up and saw 99. <laughs> that was the that was the best thing he could do is get rid of that football. Talk flag about down. Your worst nightmare. As soon as you turn around, you got Aaron Donald breathing down your neck. But understanding where he was, understanding he could quickly escape the pocket, could not afford a negative play right there. Wisely throws it out of bounds. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 11. At least half the distance to the goal line. Another penalty, this on Darius Williams in the secondary, so it's first down and goal inside the two for the Jaguars. Remember, this is a long drive now for the Jaguars. They're rolling 12 plays. And look at, here's the hold on 11. Yep. So first and goal at the two. 13th play of the drive, Carlos Hyde driving it in for the touchdown. And the Jaguars was an impressive drive to get their first points on the West Coast. Urban's loving it. 13 plays, a fourth down conversion, a couple third down conversions. Trevor picking up a first down with his legs on a third and six. And then two costly penalties, the taunting penalty and the holding penalty gives them three sets of downs, gives them more chances to get the ball in the end zone, they finally did. First rushing touchdown of the year for the former Big Ten running back of the year at Ohio State under his now head coach, Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. And the extra point caps the second first half touchdown for Jacksonville in the last six games. The taunt kept things going. Eventually Jacksonville punching it in with Carlos Hyde. in the month of November and for the Rams they lost three consecutive games for the first time since 2019 they have never lost four straight under Sean McVay they lead 10-7 right now after the Jaguars complete a 13 play 73 yard drive Looking for a little running room and an excellent special teams play as Brandon Powell is tripped up by Dario Gumbawale short of the 20 yard line for Matthew Stafford first eight games in a Rams uniform Looking good, nine yards an attempt, 22 touchdowns, only four picks, and a passer rating of 118. Since then, though, yards per attempt way down. Touchdowns and interceptions even, and of those five interceptions, three were pick sixes. No doubt, and Coach McVay said, hey, listen, we're emphasizing it, but not overemphasizing it. We know Matthew can play better. We know he's had three you know, huge turnovers that have immediately resulted in points for the other team. But we're not going to overcoach this thing. He knows how to play, and he'll get us on track. David Edwards back out in that line on left guard. So good to see Edwards back, one of the two injured linemen back out there. And on first down, Sony Michelle 
with the carry to the 21 yard line. Let's check in with Laura. Well, talking about that winless November, I talked to Andrew Whitworth. He said, we played three winning teams and handed them 14 points of their own territory. We did everything to help them win. He said, in my five years here, there hasn't been a single game that if you spotted us 14, we weren't going to win it. So he said, yeah, there's a, hey, we need to be better, but also a, man, if we just eliminate stopping ourselves and handing out points, how do these games play out? We don't really know, he said. Well, that's part of the challenge that it's been for the Rams over the last month is figuring out how to stop hurting themselves. Second and six at the 21-yard line for Los Angeles. Stafford in the air. Wide open, Skoranek with the grab, and a first down to the 44 of Jacksonville. Wingard with the tackle after the 35-yard gain. Well, Matt Stafford, check to this play, and you're going to see Skoranek just fly down the middle of your screen on the backer a great matchup for the Rams but Matthew Stafford when you see all those players touching their helmet like that they're getting to a basic check and what they were doing was getting to a two deep zone an easy call for everybody on the defense it's just a safe check for them and Matthew Stafford saw it changed the play did a quick play action to hold the backer and then threw a strike right behind him to Big Skoranek and now back to the big lineup with a sixth offensive lineman in on first down. Stafford under pressure even with that extra lineman and down he goes. Rudy Ford was the first to get there and Dewan Smoot finished him off. And watch the back, Sony Michelle. He's going to have to get out here to make this block on a safety blitzing off the edge. He ditches his fake and he's got to go make that collision closer to the line of scrimmage to keep that traffic away from Matthew Stafford so he's got time in the pocket so he could stay there and stay comfortable. That collision happened far too close to Matthew Stafford and made him a little uneasy, forced him to move. Fifteen, that play clock right down to zero when he got the snap and a quick toss over the middle to Tyler Higby. And a third and long coming up. First time today we've seen consecutive completions for Matthew Stafford. They're going to need another one here. Don't be surprised deep. if they go for it, too, after this. It might be four down territory. On third and ten, Stafford waiting, throwing, and down with the catch is Higby. And he's going to be just short of the first down inside the 35. It took a while to develop. Look at Matt. He's ready to throw it a little bit earlier. And Higby finally breaks off his route. What a catch. You called it, Mark. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Absolutely. I figured if they get a big chunk of yards here, even if uh, even a fourth and one or two or even three, I think they would have gone for it. But especially this. You've got to slam it up in there and trust this run game. Or the sneak game from Matthew Stafford. I'm fine, Mark. I'm fine, he said over and over again. Show what he's fine with a first down sneak. Oh, he's all good. One of the toughest guys this league has. Tough as nails. Number nine. Quarterback for the Rams. Nice little pressure step there, too. Let it declare. Better move. Jags have really struggled defensively, Mark, on fourth down. That's the ninth fourth down conversion they've allowed in 11 tries. From the 33, Stafford looking. A lot of time and throws it nowhere. I think he opened the wrong way. Looked like he was supposed to make a fake to the back. Let's see. He opens this way, and the back's going the wrong way. He realized it quickly, and then just took off and set up shop over by the numbers. <laughs> yeah. See, right here, he's, oh, all right, well. <laughs> Catch you guys later. I'll go over here, far away from these people who are trying to tackle me. Second and 10 at the 33, this is Sony Michelle. Weaving forward, breaking tackles, and a good run of nine for Sony Michelle. That's that same open side zone that they tried to run so many times against Green Bay. They're just getting much better push, better double teams, and Sony Michelle's hitting that hole fast and getting up 
to the linebacker level quickly, making it more effective. Last week they got stopped on similar runs like that on third and one, fourth and one. They got some safety run throughs. Coach McVay was just so frustrated about the run game. So we need to make a change. We got to get these guys blocked up and understand situational awareness when it's time to come off these double teams a little sooner. Third down and a yard. Michelle again met in the backfield and dropped by Adam Gotsis. What a play by Gotsis. Penetration destroying that Rams running play. Watch him right inside, right over the backup center, 65, Coleman Shelton. Boom, just sheds him, throws him by, and meets Sony Michelle in the backfield. But here we go again. And now 0 for 4 on third down today. Not going to go for this one as Matt Gay comes on to try from 44 yards out to extend the lead. Hit from 40 earlier. This from 44, and it is good. And a 13-7 lead for the Los Angeles Rams. Great day in Los Angeles. The home team up six. And look at Malcolm Brown here in the backfield. Defensive tackle who goes in and clears the way for Carlos Hyde. <laughs> and his head man is so excited. Giving him a chance on offense. But I guarantee he said, hey, coach, next time I want the ball. And now next time might be this time. Jaguars down by six, and the kickoff will go out of bounds. Just snuck out of bounds before it got to the goal line, so Jacksonville with outstanding field position. Kick out of bounds. 7.41 to go. The kicking team. The ball we place at the 40-yard line. First down. This week on Thursday Night Football, it's a clash of... The Jaguars coming off a 13-play, 73-yard drive that was capped by that touchdown run. Took 6.32 off the clock. Back to work, and once again, Carlos Hyde in at running back. Robinson has not been out there again since the fumble. Hyde the carry on first down, and Hyde nowhere to go. Greg Gaines was there, may have picked up a yard after the initial contact, and it's second down. Still no James Robinson. Now he's been bothered by the knee and the heel injury, but came out to start the game. Aaron Donald ripped the ball out of his hands, and we haven't seen him on the field since. Just like last week, but, you know, it, it's good to see Jacksonville coming out, trying to establish this run game, looking like they're going to throw here, but really on first down, trying to run it downhill, take a page out of San Francisco's book from a few weeks ago when they got after the Rams. And dropped. James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end, couldn't pull this in. They lost Dan Arnold last week with an injury. They miss him at tight end. And just a little bit behind him. You've got to catch that ball. You're an NFL tight end, no doubt, and make the catch. But if you're Trevor Lawrence and you're critical of yourself, you want to put that thing on the front number and lead him to the outside of the field. Third and nine, Rams rush five. Lawrence in trouble, Lawrence is going down. Ernest Jones, now one and a half sacks on the year for the rookie from South Carolina. Watch Ernest Jones, number 50. Put a move on Hyde there and just an effort sack really. Playing through the whistle. Staying in his rush lane, getting his paws on the quarterback. Just the sixth sack in the last three and a half games for this Rams defense after they had 25 through the first eight weeks. Couple wave for the fair catch and make it inside the 10 yard line. Rams defense getting it done, turning it over to the offense in a six point game. You'd have thrown to him. <laughs> no doubt. It's a boy band 90s haircut. I love it. <laughs> In the 2000s. <laughs> Sony Michelle with the carry. Not much going on for Michelle there. Give him a couple out near the 12-yard line. 
this NFC West race is getting closer and closer to being Arizona's. They've got the 10 and 2 record now after their win over the Bears earlier today. Plus, they have already won head to head against the Rams. Those two teams play again next week. That's a huge one next week for this team. And this is a get right game, right? They got to get back on track, establish the run, get more reps for Odell Beckham Jr. in this new offense, and go into next week with a big win. Second down and seven. Five defensive backs out there for the Jaguars. Stafford to throw. Quick pitch and catch to Tyler Higby. And Higby's got the first down. Out to the 20 yard line. Nevin Lawson on the stop. Matt Stafford so quick and so accurate. In quick game, that ball just jumps out of his hand. This is what makes him so deadly, so decisive. With those underneath throws. And so accurate, giving guys a chance to run. Quiet day for Cooper Cup so far. Only one target, no catches. For the league leader with 92 receptions. From the 20 yard line on first down, this is Sony Michelle, and he's stacked up in the line of scrimmage for no gain. This Rams offense trying to get on track, Laura Oakman, and it's been fits and starts again today. And that's what Sean McVay kind of alluded to because he said, think about it. We brought Odell in not expecting the injury, so he'd provide depth, we thought. He'd make some plays. and said he comes in, doesn't know our terminology or anything else, and plays every single snap. Defensively said we haven't enabled Vaughn to be able to shine because we've been playing from behind. He said we'd see those personnel groupings because he said, we're trying to figure out how to express our identity. And he said, even I don't know what it's going to look like today. Yeah, and it's been a mix, too. Usually an 11 personnel team. We've seen a lot more of a heavy set from this Rams team. And trying to get it to Cooper Cup and Stafford airmailed and brings up third down. But before third down, we check in once more for a game break with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Niners Seahawks tied at seven. Niners looking for their four straight win. This helps. Garoppolo hands it off to Elijah Mitchell, who punches it in from two yards out. Sam Fran up 14-7. Kevin. All right, Carissa, thanks very much. San Francisco starting to get things rolling. Stafford trying to get things rolling. Looking deep for Odell Beckham Jr. The pass is incomplete. One-on-one -on -one with Rayshon Jenkins. Nothing doing on the deep ball, and it's fourth down. Watch Odell Beckham, top of your screen. Takes off on a go route, gives a little stutter. And Stafford's just throwing this ball up because Rayshon Jenkins didn't have vision back to the quarterback. He couldn't see where this ball was coming from. So he's just trusting Odell to go make a play. But you see the lack of chemistry there. He's new. He's new, and you got to work him in. And... They thought he was just going to be icing on the cake, and now he's he's got to be the whole meal. He's got to learn this offense quickly. Fair catch called for, and a bump. That'll be a flag. Skoranek colliding with Jadon Mickens. Not allowing him the chance to field the punt. So Jacksonville's going to have excellent field position for one and more possession in this half. Again, they got it at the 40. Now they're going to get it close to the 40, close to the midfield again. But just some sloppy plays on special teams and on defense. He has 315 yards. Fair catch interference, kicking team number 18. 15 yards in the spot of the foul, first down. Toby Camillus, the special teams coach, working things over with Skoranek. Jags with excellent field position, trying to take the lead before the break. Every single coach you talk to in the league will talk about staying on schedule, and the Jags have not been able to do that. 1.2 yards per play on first down, under a yard per play on second down, and it leaves Trevor Lawrence in really tough spots on third and long almost every time. It's asking an awful lot out of a rookie quarterback to handle third and nine regularly. Robinson back out there at running back. Lawrence in all kinds of trouble looking to the sideline, and it's Laquan Treadwell, the intended receiver, for the pass incomplete. So your yardage now on first down that you average is actually down, there is a flag down as well at midfield. Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 11, five yard penalty, first down. The Rams are certainly in a giving mood as December begins, third defensive penalty. There's the slot. You see Williams just grabbed that left shoulder. <laughs> McVay's like, ooh. <laughs> Who's that? 
from the Rams 46 on first down. Lawrence, quick toss. O'Shaughnessy hangs on this time. Good throw from Lawrence. And down to the 40-yard line, a pickup of six as Ernest Jones makes the stop. And now you're on schedule if you're the Jaguars. And that's the first down positive play. Quick strike, quick game that you need. Now you got your whole playbook open on second and medium. The play fake. Lawrence off the hands of O'Shaughnessy and almost an outstanding acrobatic pick by Jordan Fuller. This thing just sneaks away from Jordan Fuller. Look at him slam on the brakes after this thing's tipped. Watch. Oh, he almost got the second hand on it. And O'Shaughnessy's got to make that catch. Trevor's got to try. Same thing. Just put it on his body. Make it an easy catch for him because those Tip passes like that often end up in defenders' hands. It's like Fuller almost had it. Third down and four from the 40. And Lawrence, a little bobble on the mesh with Hyde, and a loss of two back to the 42-yard line. See, a little confusion on who was getting the ball there. See Trevor upset. Might have held on just a little bit too long. He's trying to make his read. Just a little indecision there. Just bobbled it on the on that mesh point. But those are so important when you're going to run those zone reads and read options to have such a good mesh point like that. Try the Houdini act and pull that ball out at the last second. Ten-yard line. The fair catch is made. 2.15 to go. The Rams will start deep in their own end, up 13-7. to seven. This week, NFL players are wearing custom cleats in honor of the causes they support through My Cause, My Cleats. Text MCMC to 635-635 to hear the players' stories, bid on their custom cleats for charity, and learn more about how they're making a difference in their communities. Yeah, it's got some cool designs. Yeah, they like the, it. The outreach that they do to get a bunch of different charities involved and people involved in painting the shoes is really cool. First and ten from the 11. Stafford down to Jefferson. First catch of the day for Van Jefferson. And Jefferson driven to the turf by Rudy Ford. And that will take us to the two minute warning in Los Angeles. Rams looking to add to the lead a 13 7 advantage with two to play in the first. Sean McVay in his fifth season, a 50 and 25 record for the current Rams head coach entering today. Second down and three. Two minutes to go for the Rams. Here's Cooper Cup, his first catch of the afternoon, and Cup knocked out of bounds with a first down at the 25 yard line. Wingard and Ford combine on the stop after the seven yard gain. Well, the Rams are doing everything they can to get the ball to number 10, Cooper Cup, their top receiver. But Jacksonville is just intent on shutting him out. The Rams are, forcing, are forced to get creative and throw it to him out of the backfield. First down, here's Cup again. Second straight catch, and Cooper Cup out of bounds as Tyson Campbell was waiting for him after the eight yard gain. So for the Rams, they got their first two possessions in Jacksonville territory field goal and a touchdown. But since then, punt, field goal, and punt. Jaguars defense has done a solid job keeping the Jags in this game, and that's kind of what Jacksonville's M.O. has been of late. And the Rams hurt themselves a little bit. Don't forget, Jalen Ramsey has that unsportsmanlike call. He's kind of playing like a soccer player with a yellow card. He's got to be careful he doesn't get ejected. Second down and three. Jaguars rush four. Stafford to Higby. That was a good adjustment by the tight end to make the catch for a first down. What a catch. This ball was definitely behind him, and he snatched that thing out of thin air. That was impressive upper body movement. From the 36, Stafford incomplete. That pocket collapsing on him, and then there's a flag down in the backfield, and Stafford is uh -oh. still down. He got hit pretty good. Took a shot at the end of this play. Ooh. A 
Oof. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 95. 15 yards, first down. It's Roy Robertson Harris called for roughing the passer. Bigger concern in this building is Matthew Stafford. It's the crown of the helmet. That's why he gets the roughing the passer Ooh. call, leading with the crown right into the <laughs> chest of Matthew Stafford. Stafford walks off, but you can see Walford for at least a play. Stafford's tough, man, but that one hurt for sure. Ooh. Right in the sternum. He's flattened him. John Wolford will come in. He started in the wild card game a year ago, so now he's out there at least, as Mark mentioned, for a play and maybe more depending on the status of Matthew Stafford. Let's see what Jacksonville tries to do with a different quarterback in there, see if they're going to try and come after him or play coverage and see if they'll give him a, if Wolford will give him a cheap one. I think he's going to have about one play to do it. If the body language of Matthew Stafford is being read correctly on the sideline, he's about to come back in. There's the run. Sony Michelle twisted down Josh Allen on the stop at Stafford right back into the ball game. You see with those different looking fronts, it wasn't just a traditional over, under, even front. You hear the center yell, gang, gang to 44. Basically, hey, all you guys go block to 44. I don't know how they're lined up, but we need a whole gang of them to make the block. Well, Stafford right back to work finds Van Jefferson and down to the 26 yard line for a first down timeout call by the Rams. What a stud to get back in this game after taking that hit and throwing a strike right here. Kurt Menefee, what do you have coming up for us? <laughs> that was good. That was good. Short temper, I get it. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Rams looking to put some points on the board before halftime here. Stafford. Short to couple. Nice adjustment by Cup to pluck that one off to his side at the 20 yard line and a timeout taken by the Rams, their second. Seen two of these throws to the right, one to Higby and now to Cup, but just behind his target a little bit and two excellent catches. That is not, wow, look at that balance, the focus. And all that after Stafford just got pummeled in the backfield Ooh, as soon as he let it go too he knew he was going to take a beating six for six on the drive for 51 yards and that's kind of the way i mean he's so competitive and so tough you know a lot of guys they'll fold up like a cheap suit you hit him like that stafford he just comes alive man he just turns into superman you know like all right that's how we're going to play let's roll Second down and three. One timeout left for the Rams. Three receivers to the bottom of the screen. Stafford looking to the top side for Odell Beckham Jr. And he just was a little too far for number three. I would like to see Odell go get this thing. Matthew Stafford just threw a seed right in between the corner and safety. He tried to put it on the top shelf and you see Odell feeling that safety's presence. Oh, I would have liked to see him go up with two hands. He kind of shied away from that thing. That is not an easy throw when the safety and corner have vision back to the quarterback. I mean, he put a, put a great ball in between them. Love to see your wideout go, go make your right on that one. Third down and three. Stafford, quick toss, dropped by Van Jefferson at the 12. Campbell in the coverage. Jefferson just flat out dropped it. Yeah, you got to have this catch, especially in his new role, right? And and that's the thing, why this offense has been a little shaky these last few games. When you lose somebody like Robert Woods, you have to understand him and Cooper Cup, it's like having two extra quarterbacks on the field because of their experience and because of their mental capacity to understand spacing, zone routes versus man routes, this complex offense and the verbiage when you lose a guy like that, you got to move people around. And now Van Jefferson's having to learn a whole new position. 37-yard field goal good. Makes it 16-7 Rams. We'll be right back after these messages from Pepsi and Uber Eats. 
And take a look at this throw from Matt Stafford. And Odell Beckham takes his eye off the ball at the last second there, feeling this safety entering your screen from the right. See his eyes. You can tell he's bracing for contact. Love to see him just snag that thing and curl up, fall down. You mentioned, though, Robert Woods goes out as OBJ got here, but it's not so simple. It's just, okay, you're a wide receiver, so just play the wide receiver exactly spot. Right. And he's he's the Z. He's the true Z. So, you know, there's so much put on his plate. To line up in specific positions, understand, as you see, Trevor's start to his career. Yeah, Troy Aikman's record, Matthew Stafford's record, Trevor Lawrence's record, the same as Stafford's through the first 11 games. And, of course, Troy Aikman, you're talking about first-round picks. Troy Aikman's situation, very similar. That was a franchise that was just starting to build upwards when That's he right. got to Dallas. And when you're young like that and there isn't the talent around you, life is tough. <laughs> and it's a tough, lonely position back there at quarterback without a bunch of studs running around you. From the 25 on first down. Set up for Robinson. Robinson's going to get a little push head from his blocker, and timeout will be used by Urban Meyer at the 36-yard line where it'll be first down. So 11 seconds to go until halftime. Jaguars with two timeouts left if they choose to use them. Long way to go if you're thinking about field goal range. Matthew Wright is long 56 yards this year. Well, I like the screen call just to see, you know, a lot of teams will run it right there and just see what they get and decide if they're going to take a shot downfield. Works out just the same with the screen route or screen play, excuse me, and, you know, gain about 15, 20 yards. And now let's try and take a shot down the field, see if we can steal three points before we get the ball in the second half. Lawrence trying to fit it into Robinson. Seven seconds to go until halftime. Likely one more play for Jacksonville down 16 to 7. Trevor just missed. The back made a good move. Robinson made a great move on the on the backer to spring free. Watch him. He's going to sneak out of the backfield and burst to the right of your screen. Boom, 25. There he goes. I mean, he's got a clear lane to make some make a big dent in this uh, field position here and Trevor just missed. Jacksonville gets the football to start the second half. Maybe the final play of the first half. Rams rush four. Lawrence chased by Vaughn Miller. Throws across his body. Robinson a juggling attempt at it. That'll be incomplete. And that will take us to halftime in Los Angeles. Jaguars down 16 to 7 at the break. And our first half stats are brought to you by Old Navy. Trevor Lawrence, 6 of 12, 52 yards. Matthew Stafford, 13 of 22, 139 yards. But despite going 0 for 6 on third down in the first half, the Rams enjoy a 16 to 7 lead. Stay tuned to the Verizon halftime with Kurt Terry, Howie, and Michael coming up right after these messages. What we saw, and we'll see it right out of the gate here again, that Rams defense very, very strong in the first half. Jaguars under 100 yards of offense. And the defense is the lone bright spot right now for this Rams team. The offense is looking a little slow, 0 for 6 on third down, but the defense has done a great job holding the Jags to under 100 yards in that first half, keeping Trevor guessing in coverage and flustering him in the pocket, forcing him to flush out of the pocket and try and make some throws on the run. You can tell it's, they've been getting to him. And they want to keep it up. We'll see if in this second half, Vaughn Miller can get that elusive sack that he's been looking for with the Rams. What the coaches have to say, Laura Oakman knows. Sean McVay said right away, Matthew took a shot, but he said what we all say, boy, he's tough, he's okay. Now the receivers have to catch the ball. He said, I didn't know what to expect, but he said, I like some things. We just have to finish third downs and play efficiently. As for Urban Meyer, he said, one good drive. If we hold on to the ball, we could win this thing. The question he said is, who's going to carry the ball? After James Robinson fumbled again, he said, that's what they were going to talk about at halftime with personnel because, quote, our first down is not good. 
Now we showed you those numbers earlier, averaging just over one yard per play on first down, which has kept the Jaguars' offense completely off schedule. Robinson starting at running back in the second half, and Lawrence trying to check it down to him, sailed it high, and it's second down. And you and I were talking during the break, Mark, the pressure that Trevor Lawrence is feeling. He's, he's feeling it consistently every single play. He sure was. Aaron Donald got up in his lap and it forced him to throw this ball quicker than he wanted to, and he couldn't get his full momentum into the throw and just sailed it over the halfback's head. That's the kind of pressure. I mean, it doesn't show up necessarily as a sack, but he clearly, Aaron Donald, affected that play and caused the incompletion. Four-man pressure. Again to the air, Jones with the catch, tackled immediately by Jordan Fuller. Now third and five for the Jaguars. He had no choice but to catch that. <laughs> he heard that ball hit his chest, thunk. <laughs> but that's that quick game accuracy from Trevor Lawrence. And I mean, listen, Coach Schottenheimer, Coach Bevel, they know the plan was to get the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible. Because if you let these guys run around when you're these defensive linemen, and Vaughn Miller, Leonard Floyd, Aaron Donald, you don't want your quarterback back there holding that football. On third and five from the 30. Pressure again, Lawrence in trouble, floats it to the sideline incomplete. And it'll bring up fourth down. Get some good pressure. With Aaron Donald, he's gonna end up looping around, around the outside. And watch, oh, Trevor had the corner route over Jalen Ramsey's head. First to flush out of the pocket again. Just can't get comfortable, you know? He can't get in a rhythm back there, and it makes it so tough to stack completions like that and move the ball down the field when you're constantly on the move. 4-3 and out for the Jaguars offense. This is Powell waving for the fair catch, and he'll make it at the 15-yard line where the Rams will start first down and 10. Matthew Stafford took a giant hit in the first half on the Roy Robertson-Harris play right in the chest. And Mama, out crown of the helmet is why that got flagged. You cannot lead with the crown of your helmet to the quarterback. That's why that was flagged. Matthew Stafford was out one play and came back in. There's nobody tougher, man. Holy cow. That is... Serious. These guys know he's in it, man. He's a fierce competitor. You got to drag him off the field to get him out. From the 15 on first down, Stafford quick toss to Van Jefferson. Jefferson down in the arms of Tyson Campbell at the 21 yard line. And they brought the safety, Rayshon Jenkins, off the end of the line of scrimmage. He's going to come off the line right here. There's nobody accounting for him. Nobody's blocking him, and Matt Stafford doesn't panic, doesn't flinch. Just stands in there, delivers a strike in quick game on a quick out to Van Jefferson. He's really taking the bulk of this load once Robert Woods went down. Second and four, off the play action. Stafford looking back for Cooper Cup. He's got him down the sideline. Cup stepping through one tackle and down near the Jacksonville 35. Rudy Ford credited with the stop, but the Rams strike for 43. And they're going to sneak Cooper Cup through just, just past the line of scrimmage, looking like he's going to block, weaving his way through traffic, and sneak him out the back door. Ford almost sniffed it out, but just not quite in time. Look at Stafford using his eyes, pretending to look to the left, slamming on the brakes, and delivering that patented deep shot and splash play from that Sean McVay offense. Biggest play of the day for this Rams offense. Sony Michelle to the 29-yard line. You mentioned it, the patented big play, Mark. Well, that's what this Rams team does. That's the 13th play of 40 yards or more this season. Nobody has more in the NFL. They came in with nine plays of 50 yards or more, had two of them last week in the loss to Green Bay. That's the most 
in the National Football League. This is a chunk offense. Oh, and it makes it so fun to watch. And, you know, something they've kind of been missing the last few years were some of those big time strikes down the field. You can tell McVay loved it. He loves giving Stafford the ability to do it because he knows when it's not open, he'll just check it down and keep us in, you know, keep us on schedule. Second and fourth to 29. Stafford with time, a dart to Cup. Cup motors away, and Cup will coast into the end zone for the touchdown. 29 yards from Stafford to Cup, the 11th time they've connected for a touchdown this year. And this is just a little option route in the slot. Cup's going to take this to the post. He's going to get pressure from him. Watch how, oh gosh, that is just textbook for a receiver. He got the pressure. The DB in front of him blitz, right? But he knows, I can't just speed this thing up. I gotta take my time, just mosey off the ball, almost miss the snap count, and then go put Wingard in a phone booth, get foot to foot, face to face, and break across for an easy score. What a route. Matthew Stafford looking for his favorite target and finding him. Ram starting to pull away early in the third. Matthew Stafford, Sean McVay feeling a little better right now. Cooper Cup, <laughs> no catches on the first five drives. Five for 94 in the last two drives for Cooper Cup. Everybody feeling a little better on that Los Angeles sideline as the kickoff will go through the end zone for the touchback. Mark, take us back to the touchdown. We're going to see a little pressure off the slot here. Boom. Then you're going to see Winger to come down and guard Cooper Cup with all that space. Now Cooper Cup has a three-way go. He could sit that down, he could break out, or what he does is he hits the home run with the post down the middle. But just so patient, trying to show that quick out route and then breaking across Winger's face. That is a unfavorable matchup for the defense there. And Matthew Stafford takes advantage. Unfortunately, it's Winger's birthday today. <laughs> Poor guy, Cooper Cup. Setting a Rams franchise record on the birthday boy. 11 games with 90 yards or more, almost intercepted by Ernest Jones. If it had just stuck on that right hand, he'd have had the pick, and maybe a pick six, as Lawrence was wide of LaVisca Chenault. They got a good shot on Lawrence, too, but you could tell he was. they were trying to figure out whether he was going to run on that shallow cross or sit it down. When somebody attaches to you like that, number 50, Ernest Jones, when he attaches to the receiver, that tells the quarterback and receiver, the receiver's got to keep running. And really, you tell the quarterback with your body language, if you're looking at the quarterback, that means you're booking. That means you're running out the back door. So he gave him the improper body language to sit that down, and that led to the miscommunication and the incompletion. Again, off schedule now for the Jaguars. Lawrence trying to get him back on schedule, and he finds Laquan Treadwell. And Treadwell with a first down in front of Darius Williams, picks up 16. Treadwell's just going to have a deep in route across your screen like that. Trevor's going to show quick play fake and set up shop outside of the pocket. I love that they're moving his launch point as much as they can just to keep this defense off balance, to keep that rush off balance a little bit and try and help their quarterback stay upright and keep a clean jersey. Two tight ends in the ball game. O'Shaughnessy, one of them in motion. On first down, this is Robinson. Good hole. And Robinson upended in Rams territory with a first down at the 46. Jordan Fuller on the stop. Best run of the day for the Jaguars. And these are the kind of runs that San Francisco used a few weeks ago. But you're going to see the tight end block across, playing fullback O'Shaughnessy. And then the downhill running approach. That's the way to try and attack this defense. You're not going to beat them side to side. They're too fast. You've got to go right at them. On the 46 on first down, this is Treadwell. Up the sideline, tripped up by Williams. But a good gain on first down, close to another first down. As Laquan Treadwell's getting things going, his third catch of the afternoon. And that's just a little extension of this run game. It's a called run. And Trevor just felt the space out there. Understanding his guys have a chance to catch and run if he gives them an accurate ball, and that's exactly what he did. Second center in for Jacksonville as well. Brandon Linder is questionable to return in this ballgame. Robinson trying to break through penetration. He cannot. 
In fact, he'll lose a yard back to the 38-yard line, and it'll bring up third down. This is a much more manageable third down for Urban Meyer's squad. The average today, nearly eight yards average on third down because they just cannot stay ahead of the chains. And it makes it so tough on Trevor to have to consistently convert third and longs. Fortunately here, they got a third and short. They've got to take advantage. They might even be in four down territory again. They're chasing points at this, at this stage. They've really got to go. Yeah, and you're two and nine. What do you have to lose at that point? Robinson trying to burrow his way up the middle, and Robinson's not going to have the first down. Maybe a yard to the 37, but it brings up a fourth and one, and I don't think there's any question that they go for it here. Absolutely, you got to go for it. But if you're going to run that ball, you got to get some more push up front. Robinson out, hide in on fourth and one. They're one for one on fourth down today. Farrell and Treadwell to the top of the screen. On fourth down, Lawrence to throw, incomplete. He wanted O'Shaughnessy, Jalen Ramsey with the denial. And the Rams defense turns the Jaguars away, trying to fit it to his tight end. And the former Jag Ramsey says no way. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Beautiful SoFi Stadium on a picture-perfect afternoon. In the City of Angels, not maybe as picture-perfect for Trevor Lawrence as he would like. 10 of 19 for 83 yards after Jalen Ramsey broke up the fourth down pass. And now first down for Matthew Stafford and the Rams. And a flinch up front will cost Los Angeles five. False start. Offense number 12. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Jefferson moving early. Let's go back to that fourth down play for Jackson. Yeah, I don't know if I love this. I mean, it's just quick game. On fourth and one, get under center, bring in Malcolm Brown, your D tackle, and slam it up in there. Quarterback sneak it. Anything, but I don't know. I just, I don't really, that call didn't sit well with me. Didn't sit well if you're a Jaguars fan either because they turn it over on downs. First and 15 at the 33-yard line. That's Jefferson in motion. Delayed handoff to Sony Michelle. And Michelle riding some good momentum to the 41-yard line. Picks up eight. Sony Michelle's been asked to carry the running load today. Daryl Henderson just banged up. Hit his quad injury last week after a rib, an ankle, a concussion. So it's been Sony Michelle all day long at the running back spot. Second and seven, pressure comes. Stafford able to get away, pass deflected and incomplete. It was Jack who provided the pressure and then Dewan Smoot got the tip. It's third down. You see Miles Jack come from the right side of your screen, number 44, getting in the backfield. Michelle missed him. That's Sony Michelle's guy in protection. And Miles Jack just kind of hit himself next to Smoot right there. And Sonny Michelle took off and forgot to block. We had a great conversation the other day with Miles Jack. What an engaging young man, as you said, despite the fact that he went to UCLA. Exactly. Look at all that communication, trying to figure out a mic point up front. Third and seven at the 41. Stafford with the pocket collapsing. Uh, oh, great catch by Cooper Cup. It looked like it was headed for the turf, and somehow Cup's hands were strong enough to pull that one back up and get the first down. Look at this crossing route from Cooper Cup. Wow. <laughs> to hit that thing full speed and go down on the shoe tops to make that catch. Cooper Cup is one special wideout. Seventh 100 yard game of the year. Most in the National Football League. Last three drives is when he's done it all. He was shut out. The first five offensive possessions of the day for the Rams. And he's still got a 100-yard game, and we've got plenty of football to play. Michelle into Jaguars territory to the 45-yard line. Game break time with Carissa Thompson. Thank you so much, Kevin. Seahawks trailing 23-14. Russell Wilson 
finds D. Eskridge for the seven-yard score. Rookie's first career touchdown. Seahawks down by two. Kevin? A little fist pump from your old head coach there, Pete Carroll. Seahawks trying to rally. It's been a rough year up at Seattle. Tough, tough go for them. Second and four for the Rams, trying to move to eight and four and keep pace with the Arizona Cardinals, who are 10 and two after their win over the Bears today. Stafford to the sideline. Van Jefferson coming back to get that one with Nevin Lawson right on him. He's short of the first down. Great grab by Jefferson, just shy of the marker, of the first down marker and line to gain. So third down and a yard. Michelle the running back, 17 carries, 77 yards today for Sony Michelle. Cup in motion on third and one. Now Jefferson in motion, play action. Stafford with time, floating it for Cooper Cup. Came back to get it, and the sliding grab at the 22, a first down. Oh, they lined up like they were going to go. Like they were going to slam it up in there for one yard. Watch Cooper Cup go all the way. I mean, he's has to have run 10 miles today. He's all <laughs> over the field, man. And then look at the adjustment. Stafford knows he's safe to let that ball go just about anywhere. Because, once again, the DB just doesn't have vision on the quarterback. He's not going to see where that ball's coming from. But Cooper Cup is, and he makes a great adjustment. Seven catches, 121 yards for Cooper Cup. Stafford to throw again. Looking over the middle. Higby, the tight end, has got it. And down at the two, first and goal for the Rams. And almost the exact same play but just with a different personnel and watch Higby fight through some backers and have to hand fight a little bit with Rayshon Jenkins just to get through there Stafford attacking these guys down the field Higby almost getting the hands on too fifth catch of the day for Higby first down and goal Rams already up 23-7 as the Jaguars shuffle in a heavier defensive line And a timeout will be used by the Rams. Well, Cooper Cup, who was all by himself and had nothing going for the first five drives, has gotten red hot over the last three possessions. Now seven catches for 121 yards. So good with his spatial awareness. Look at those hands, the focus, just understanding. Like, mentioned it before but he's like having an extra quarterback in the huddle he just knows this game so well he's such a natural receiver understanding spacing and when it's man when it's zone how to throttle down your routes when to speed up and then the way he catches the football in the second them already career highs on the year in catches yards and touchdown catches Higby in motion Stafford, that ball slipped right out of his hands. It's an incomplete pass at its second and goal. That will not go on the end of season highlight reel for Matthew Stafford. Oh, it, it looked like he got confused or something, but Cooper Cup is standing wide open. Both DBs ran. Look at him. Both DBs ran with the flat route. And Cooper Cup's like, yeah, this is going to be the easiest pitch and catch <laughs> of our time together, buddy. And Matt just dirted it by accident. So it's second and goal for the Rams. Here's Michelle. And not going anywhere. Good penetration. Dewan Smoot, the first there for the Jags. Now third down. They just had too many guys over here. They had bad numbers on the top of the screen. Causing that penetration, but they had. I mean, Wingard was there. Just had too many guys on the end of the line. His own read gone bad. 
Third down and goal. Three receivers with Beckham at the bottom of the screen. He'd be in motion. Stafford looking. Pressure coming. Throwing. Got Jefferson at the back of the end zone. And the toe tap gets him six. Look at Matt Stafford hit this. You're going to see Van Jefferson outside release and then get to the top of the Rams logo on top of those letters, saving himself a little space in the back of the end zone. But, I mean, talk about arm talent. He's throwing this ball as he's fading away, backpedaling with pressure in his face. That's that special arm talent that puts Matthew Stafford at the top of the league when it comes to QBs. 30 to 7 Los Angeles Rams were hoping this was a get well game for them. They're getting well Kevin Kugler Mark Sanchez Laura Oakman our NFL on Fox crew in Los Angeles Los Angeles Rams enjoy a 30 to 7 lead And Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup really on the same page right now and watch Matthew Stafford's eyes He knows this is a long developing route Cooper's got to go all the way across the defense and look at Matt looking for his guy right there. See his eyes. He knows he's going to have to get back there and he's got to feel where he's going, feel his angle as he comes out of this route. So good, those two together. They are a special combination. Cooper Cup, fun to throw to. I don't imagine anybody who's that consistent is fun to throw to. It's so good. It's so <laughs> nice. From the 25 on first down. Quick toss and oh my goodness, what a tackle. Jadon Mickens upended by Darius Williams, who read that play from the very beginning. He was all over it. Felt the quick throw. Loss of two on the play. First catch for Jadon Mickens this year. Whether it be in Tampa Bay or with Jacksonville, not the results he was looking for. Second and 12. Lawrence to the sideline. Coming back is Tavon Austin, the former Ram, with the catch just shy of the 30 yard line. Hope to call it incomplete. You could feel this defense just sitting on all these routes because they haven't taken too many shots down the field. There's nothing scaring them vertically. You see Jalen Ramsey just squatting on some of these routes. Look for him to do the same thing right around that first down marker, understanding that the offense is trying to get them. Touchdown drive, the only bright spot today for the Jacksonville offense. Third down and 12. Lawrence to Mickens, who makes the catch, and Mickens has the first down. Play by J. Don Mickens at the 35 yard line moves the chains. Look at all that space out there. He knows it's third and long. At the bottom of your screen, he did scare him just a tick, and that the slip is what got him. Ramsey lost his footing. Kind of trapped it with the ground. Might have got away with one. Hasn't gotten away with it yet. John McVay had the challenge flag in his hand. He put it away. Must have decided not worth it. On first down, Treadwell up the sideline. And Treadwell tripped up after a pickup of eight. I was watching Sean McVay that whole time. He had the flag ready to go. And I'm sure consulting with his eyes in the sky, they said, you know what? It's not worth spending it. That was close. It was. You don't have to be as aggressive with the challenge when you're up 30 to 7. <laughs> Got a little breathing. And they've not challenged this year, so it's not like this is an aggressive challenge team anyway. Second down. This is Hyde. Fumbles the football, and it's recovered by Taylor Rapp. Hyde coughs it up. Rams recover, and Los Angeles with 1.23 to go in the third. Recovers its second fumble of the day. Ripped out by Sean Robinson.
running back ball security. It's been a big problem today for Jacksonville. This was early when Robinson coughed it up, giving the Rams a short field after the Donald strip. Now moments ago, Ashawn Robinson poking it from Carlos Hyde's hands, and the Rams recover at the 45-yard line of Los Angeles. So a first down, two turnovers today for the Jaguars. Both fumbles. And on first down, Michelle tripped up at the 49-yard line by Chris Claybrooks. This Rams defense doing exactly what you would want them to do, Mark Sanchez, if you're Sean McVay, against an overmatched offense. They've really clamped down on this team and not allowed them to have a lot of hope. Well, they sure have. They just suffocated them early and often. Thanks to guys like that, 99, Aaron Donald, all over Trevor Lawrence in the backfield, making him uneasy in the pocket, forcing him to move, and then the DBs and linebackers understanding their coverage and rush lanes playing well. Looks like the five of the 49. Stafford on the bootleg. Catch is made by Kendall Blanton. And the ball pops out after the catch. Just his second catch of the season. Jaguars saying they have it, but they do not. It is Rams ball, and it's a first down for Los Angeles. Yep, down, clearly. Yep, down. As soon as his elbow touches. So first down and 10, and the Rams. Stafford's got every arm. It's so <laughs> good. Does. It's so fun to watch. Final play of the quarter. And they will not snap it before the end of the quarter. We've played three in the Rams. Looking to break a three-game losing skid. Well on their way. Rams have taken control of this one. A 30-7 advantage as we start this fourth quarter. First eight games, Rams were dominant. Leading position most of their games. Last three, they've led for a total of six minutes and 25 seconds. That has not been the problem today. They have been in control. On first down. Stafford, lots of time. The check down to Sony Michelle. Michelle breaking a tackle down inside the 40 to the 38 for an injury update. We check in with Laura. Yeah, adding injury to insult right now to this Jaguars team. Cornerback Tyson Campbell's out of the game with an abdominal injury. His return is questionable. Mm. He played so well last week in that Falcons game. Sure did. He had an interception. He was all over Kyle Pitts. It's a big loss for this defense. Second down and five at the 38. High snap, Stafford able to pull it down. Had to pump twice to get Jefferson clear and Jefferson down. Short of the first down at the 35 as we get a game break for Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Washington up 7-6. Third and goal. Taylor Heineke finds Antonio Gibson for this four-yard score. Washington leads 14-6. Kevin? How about Taylor Heineke? Just continuing to impress as the Washington starting quarterback. It's like street football. <laughs> it's best, you know, run to the blue Cadillac and turn around, but... I mean, he's weaving through defenders and keeping plays alive and stringing things out to the numbers and sideline and making these crazy throws. It's fun to watch. It is fun to watch. And he's so enthusiastic about it, too. Third and two at the 35. This is Jefferson in motion again. Stafford to the sideline. Cooper Cup was having his shirt tail tugged on as he made the catch by Chris Claybrooks. And a first down. This is the nine-yard stop route by... Cooper Cup, you're going to see him show a go route, turn on the gas, and then slam on the brakes. And that ball is coming out before Cup even turns around. Okay. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 95. 15 yards, automatic first down. That's the second time Roy Robertson Harris has been flagged for roughing the passer today. And it came with a hand to the helmet of Matthew Stafford. At the end of the throw, you just can't make contact with a quarterback's helmet. <laughs> That's like, hey, give me some free yards, bud. You saw that. 
A frustration for Roy Robertson Harris, certainly. It's Tyson Campbell's back out on the field for Jacksonville. Cooper Cup on that play, 100th catch of the season. He leads the league in catches, yards, and touchdowns. But what else have you done for us, Cooper Cup? Yeah, exactly. What a season he's having. He was pacing coming in right with Calvin Johnson for the receiving record as far as yardage goes. First down and 10. From an empty backfield, Stafford to throw, looking to the end zone, got a man open, and it's off Kendall Blanton's fingertips. Shaquille Quarterman in coverage for Jacksonville. Oh, they got the coverage they wanted. They knew it was man-to-man. -man. Stafford saw it, recognized it. Just a great back shoulder throw, and you got to come down with those. A couple crucial drops for the Rams. I mean, obviously, they didn't matter today because they're running away with this game, but those things down the stretch need to be addressed. Oh, Kendall Blanton's never had a touchdown in the league. Just leaving a little meat on the bone. Here's Michelle on opening. It's Tony Michelle. He had Damian Wilson on his back and Looking carried for him for two or three more yards. Looking for a ride, a little piggyback ride there. See him get through the line of scrimmage and then Damian Wilson jumps on his back. <laughs> can't, can't bring him down. It's a lot easier when it's your five-year-old. Exactly. <laughs> Sony Michelle, 82 yards today. They asked him to carry the load with Henderson banged up, and he's certainly done it. Sean McVay told us he was confident that he could be the guy, and he has been. He's done an excellent job for him today. Hung on to the football, been good in the pass game. Cup in motion out of the backfield. It's Michelle again, and Sony Michelle riding the wave down to the one yard line. First and goal coming up for the Rams as the Rams convert on their fifth third down of the second half. He's getting some great push. He's getting good yards after contact. Really rushing for tough yards on the day in which he's asked to pick up the load for, oh. That was awkward on the collision on the handoff and Michelle unable to get in. And Stafford needs to be helped up and he's limping a little bit. Might have got stepped on coming down to center. Oh, he turned and caught his foot on Coleman Shelton's oh, yeah. left leg. Remember, Brian Allen went out on the first series, so Shelton's played the rest of the way at center. And Stafford almost makes the tackle. Ouch. And second goal. Add that to the laundry list of aches and pains for Matt Stafford. He's going to be sore tomorrow. Second goal at the one, the fade to Beckham makes the adjustment and it's his second Rams touchdown. Stafford with the little jump ball. This is a run all the way. Odell showing that he's going to block for a second. Freezing at the line of scrimmage and then a nice little fade route for Matthew Stafford, putting it right on his target. And I like that. I mean, understanding that that guy needs some catches, right? He needs to feel good going down the stretch in this offense. He needs touches. He needs touchdowns. And to take one away from Sony Michelle to give to Odell Beckham Jr., I'm all for it in a situation like that, especially when the game's in the bag, essentially. Just get your guy another touchdown catch and get him some confidence. 10.52 to go in the fourth and the 30th passing touchdown of the season for Matthew Stafford. Third time in his career he's hit the 30 touchdown mark and this is the 12th game they've played. That is a heck of a year. There's a lot more to be played. And that 7-1 and one start, man, these guys were just on fire too. I mean, he's MVP candidate halfway through the year. point try for Matt Gay. 
And a 37-7 lead for the Los Angeles Rams. OBJ, Cooper Cup, big days each. Matthew Stafford fired up. 37-7 Rams as Odell Beckham Jr. gets into the touchdown act for the second consecutive week. From two yards out. Both of these guys, you know, OBJ's been around for so long. He's still only 28 years old, laughing with Cooper Cup, who's 27 years old. These are two young dudes still having a good time on that Rams sideline. He's having a ball. And that sideline erupted when they scored, especially OBJ. It's going to be like that when Vaughn gets his first sack, too. Well, those young guys happy, but Laura Oakman, there's an old guy on the Rams that's playing a big role as well. Andrew Whitmer turns 40 next week and joins a very exclusive list of O-linemen who played past 40. With a start next week, he becomes the oldest player in NFL history to play left tackle. I asked him, what does longevity mean to you? And do not bring up any other person, which he always does. He said, it's not the good moments because those are easy to get through. That's when you're on top of the world. It makes me think of the struggle, self-doubt, being counted out, the injuries, and how many times I've strapped up my shoes and gone back to work and lived through my actions with the words that I lead, mentor, and inspire with. He said, I talk the talk and walk the walk through it all. His 231st start today. And it's not like he's, you know, this is to not disparage anyone who kicks or punts, but it's not as if he's in the position that doesn't have wear and tear. Oh, I mean, my goodness. And to keep his level of play at the level he has kept it for all these years is really impressive. Just an iron man and an anchor for this offensive line at left tackle. Here's a chance for this Rams defensive line. Second and three to hand off to LaVisca Chenault. And you wondered what would happen. We saw Robinson not get into the game for a while after his fumble. Carlos Hyde then fumbled. And you've got Chenault now back there at the running back spot. So the Jags just trying to find something that they could do offensively. Robinson back in there now at running back. Should get plenty of passing situations and let this Rams defensive line run their games and try and get a sack for number 40, their newest addition on defense. As he told us, if, the, if there's a sack to be had, we're going to get it. And a timeout used by Jacksonville with the play clock winding down. 9.30 remaining in the fourth and a third and four coming up. For Jacksonville. Saturday, it's a big college hoops doubleheader on Fox. First, UCLA faces Marquette at 2.30 Eastern. Then at 5, Arizona takes on Illinois. You can catch it all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Twenty-seven unanswered for the Los Angeles Rams to take control of this one. 37-7. Urban Myers team all the way out west. And it has not gone well for the Jaguars today. They've lost 15 straight against NFC opponents. It's about to become 16 straight with nine and a half to go in the fourth. Lawrence, backside pressure from Miller in got trouble, him. and Donald got him. Aaron Donald just reached his hand out and yanked him down. Sack number seven on the year for Aaron Donald, but a flag is down. Hold on, in the secondary, there is a flag. Holding defense, number 24. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. Taylor Rapp with the penalty, and the Jaguars stay on the field. There it is. Taylor Rapp just getting a little too physical right there. But we can still appreciate this, right? From Aaron Donald. Look at this. <laughs> just takes a swipe at him and knocks him down. <laughs> he is superhuman. So first and 10 at the 36-yard line. This is Robinson who gets four and a flag down behind the play. Likely backing the Jaguars up. Holding offense, number 
number 76. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. Will Richardson called for the holds. The Jaguars will have to back up. Yeah, right there. There. Time you see that jersey twist yep. like that. And they twerk like that and their arms go flailing. It just catches the eye of the umpire. First down and 20. And now we've got a timeout used again by Jacksonville. Their second timeout on this possession with 827 to go in the fourth. Aaron Donald today. He's the official sack king for the Rams. The unofficial record's held by Deacon Jones before they kept track of sacks, but he certainly draws a lot of attention no matter what, Mark. Oh, he's all over the place, and you saw him rip that ball out. You see him flying past D Lyman, and look at this, just getting one paw on the quarterback. <laughs> he knocks him to the turf. That's how powerful he is, how much force he brings with him. It's a big, mean dude. We were talking no about fun having to block him. We were talking with Von Miller the other day, and he said, you know, Aaron and I, we speak the same language. We're kind of the same guy. Yeah. Scary. Yeah, That's right? the language. Yes, exactly. Scary. <laughs> Especially for a guy in your shoes at oh. the quarterback position. No thanks. Wide-eyed rookie. You look up at Von Miller and Aaron Donald, who are probably in Canton someday, charging at you. First down and 20. Lawrence in all kinds of trouble on the sideline, bouncing it in front of O'Shaughnessy, just trying to get away from Troy Reeder, providing the heat there. Watch Reader coming from the top of the screen right here. Going to apply pressure quickly in that B gap. Comes untouched. Forcing Trevor to escape the pocket and throw that ball away. 8.21 to go and a 37-7 lead for the Rams. It's been a long time since Rams fans could relax in a fourth quarter. Lawrence over the middle to Chenault, and Chenault stops shy of the 45-yard line. It'll bring up third down. Taylor Rapp with the tackle. Chenault runs a great route from the slot, the same kind of option route that Cooper Cup ran against Taylor Rapp and beat him to the inside. There was no inside help. He was off to the races. So a third and three now. And again, this game is out of reach for Jacksonville, but these are reps that Trevor Lawrence needs as he continues his development. Live action reps is the only thing that's going to help him accelerate his learning curve. On third and three, Lawrence looking, fires, and he has a first down to LaVisca Chenault, and a first down into Rams territory. Taylor Rapp on the stop at a 10-yard pickup. And he went all the way through his progression, was climbing up in the pocket. Kept two hands on the football. You're going to see it's his second read. There goes the shallow of O'Shaughnessy. And then there's Chenault. And he does a good job of keeping that ball in his body. He knows there's going to be traffic around him. Other bodies in there in the middle of the field. And he's got to put it on his numbers. Good strike from Trevor Lawrence. And a first down to the 47-yard line of Los Angeles. Luke Farrell was the motion tight end. This is Carlos Hyde. First carry since his fumble. And he's down to the 43-yard line, where it'll bring up second down. Clock continuing to run, 6.50 remaining in the fourth. Let me ask you this, because you've been in positions where you're on one end or another of this blowout. You've also been involved in losing streaks and winning games. And if you're the Rams, and you looked at this, this is a get-well game, and lost yep. three straight, is this game enough to spark you with tougher competition coming down the road, or is it really a one-off game where you have to consider who you play well you definitely have to keep that in consideration it is a Jaguars but it just reminds the guys that when we execute at the right at a high level like this this is what can happen and they're gonna need to do that these next few weeks because this this schedule is backloaded for the Rams they got some tough some real stiff competition coming up well they're gonna need luggage too because they've got to go to Arizona they've got to go to Minnesota they've got to go to Baltimore so a couple of long trips with the rest of the NFC West on their schedule as well. Cardinals next week is a big one. Then the Seahawks come to town. After Christmas, they go to Minnesota. Then they go to Baltimore, and they close with a 49ers team that's been red hot of late. They're peaking at the right time. 
trying to make a push to win the NFC West. So it's going to be a dogfight down down to the finish. Cardinals, though, certainly in the driver's seat, not only a two-game lead entering play today, as the sack comes. Leonard Floyd combining with Aaron Donald to get the sack of Trevor Lawrence. Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd turned into a Trevor Lawrence sandwich. Ouch. <laughs> right in the chops. Ooh. Chiropractor. Fourth and 12. Cooper Cup calls for the fair catch and makes it at the eight yard line. So, kids, you want to be a quarterback in the National Football League? Ouch. The day is done for Matthew Stafford. Went three for seven in the first quarter for 30 yards. Since then, 23 of 31, 265 yards and three touchdowns. Impressive performance after that first quarter and the slow start for Matthew Stafford. John Wolford, who we saw for one snap earlier when Stafford was hurt, comes in to close this one out with 4.50 to go in the fourth. And on first down. Sony Michelle breaking tackles and Sony Michelle out of bounds near the 35 yard line. Let's check in downstairs with Laura Oakman. Well, you can see these decals all the players are wearing on the Rams side honoring Otis Anderson who was with the Rams. How special was he? Players have custom helmets with their signature inside. Teams don't save them once a player leaves, but the Rams equipment staff saved Otis's, hoping to send it to him if and when he caught on with another team or they hoped he'd return here. They put this decal on his helmet and sent it to his mother. The genesis of the decal, it was a group of players who approached the tree team. They asked for it. And remember, he was a practice squad player, but that's how much he touched everyone. This was a players-led tribute, Kevin. And such a sad story. Shot and killed. His father has been charged. It happened in Jacksonville. He was on that Rams practice squad and in camp with the Rams. Just a heartbreaking story. And Rams have been thinking a lot about that over the last week. We send our condolences to family of Otis Anderson Jr. as well. High Sergeant in the backfield elevated from the practice squad for the Rams. And Sergeant to pick his way to the 40 yard line. He's going to get a letter on his letterman shack. He yeah, is. That's awesome. Good for him. Here's the NFC playoff picture now. Division leaders, the Arizona Cardinals are well in control of the NFC West right now, and they have head-to-head -head in their first meeting with the Los Angeles Rams. Rams and Niners still in the mix, Eagles as well. Then you look at in the hunt, Washington, Minnesota, although they suffered a tough loss today as Lions got their first win. Panthers, Falcons, Saints all in the conversation as well. So still a lot of teams with playoff hopes, and this Rams team right in the thick of all of it. On third and five, Sergeant without much there as we go to Carissa Thompson for a game break. Thanks, Kevin. Seahawks Niners tied at 23. Russell Wilson connects with Tyler Lockett for this 12-yard score. His first touchdown since week two. Seattle in front, 30-23. Seahawks trying to create a little havoc in that NFC playoff picture. Shaking it up. I mean, they're... The Seahawks are just a tough out, you know? I mean, you don't want to have to play Seattle. You know it's going to be a physical game. This division, just across the board, one of the best in football. Anchor to punt it away. Jadon Mickens, the deep man. into the end zone or is it saved? What an outstanding play by Robert Rochelle down at the one. Rochelle got hit hard by Mickens who tried to throw him off course and he still caught up to this football and saved it from going in the end zone.
Here's Rochelle. Oh, that's terrific. Wow. Yeah, if that ball hits the line, it's a touchback. Wow. Oh. That is close. Incredibly close. Looked like the tip of the ball had it bounced on a downward I tilt, know. it would have been on the line. Exactly right. I mean, that kind of effort on special teams when you're up 37 to 7, that's got to make the special teams coach, Coach DiCamillo's, very happy. Day done for Trevor Lawrence, C.J. Beathard, former Iowa Hawkeye and former San Francisco 49er in to close this one out. And Beathard on his first play, just a sneak to get a little breathing room out to the three-yard line. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. All Rams today in Los Angeles, 37-7. to Rams on their way to 8-4. So Trevor Lawrence last time out took a hit. He was unhappy that there was not a roughing the passer call for the helmet to helmet. In fact, it sent him into the tent where he was checked out. That's why C.J. Beathard was in the game. So they have reinserted Trevor Lawrence now with two minutes to go in a 37-7 ball game after getting out of the medical tent. And on second and eight, he'll hand off to James Robinson and it'll bring up third down. So Robert Rochelle makes this terrific special teams play. Remember, the score's 37 to seven. Makes this great effort to pin the Jaguars at the one. You think Sean McVay? <laughs> it's all about setting the tone and getting the culture in, isn't it? I mean, I mean, he's so, and Whitworth, look at Whitworth. <laughs> Jogging down there. All the way down the field to congratulate a guy for a big time hustle play in a 30 point ball game. That speaks volumes about the culture they're trying to build and how focused Sean McVay is, even late in the game like this, it's completely out of hand. Lawrence, Tavon Austin, slipped through one tackle. Oh, nice move by Austin. And the former Ram, who was a first round pick here in 2013, showing off some moves. So sudden, <laughs> so quick. Start and stop, his acceleration, he's got it all. First 30-point win if they hang on, hang on since week two of 2018 against Arizona. Robinson. Rights forward for a few. Dante Leon with the tackle. Jaguars will... Some happy guys. Yeah, Jaguars will fall to 2-10 and ten after this one. A lot of smiles on the Rams' sideline, but now things really get tough over the final five games. We showed you the schedule earlier for the Los Angeles Rams. Arizona on the road next, then Seattle at home before back-to-back -back road games. Minnesota and Baltimore, San Francisco to close it out. Those are long trips, too. Those, that's that's going to be taxing late in the year. They're not going to be able to afford to start game slow like they did today. You're going to have to jump out on some of these teams. Robinson on second and five. That's likely the final play of this ball game. Jaguars can snap it again if they so choose. And the first win by 30 points or more since September 16, 2018 when they beat Arizona 34 to nothing. They'll play Arizona next week. Not the same Arizona team that they pounded in 2018. Rams get the win, 37 to seven, the final, defeating the Jacksonville Jaguars. We'll return to Inglewood to wrap up today's game after these messages.